This video is sponsored by Gamersubs. Use code JAZZY at checkout for 10% off your next order. Now, those of you that don't know, before the achievement grind began, I was a DVD streamer. And with over 4,500 hours in the game, you can imagine how bored of it I was. So when a new asymmetrical horror game of our favourite chainsaw wielding mask wearing hero came out, I knew that there was going to be a grind for it. What I didn't know was that this game is an incredible grind and there is a lot to do. For it, we're going to have to master every character and their powers, perfect our killing and escaping methods, and on top of all of that, pray that we don't get any bugs. So with that don't forget to like and subscribe for more achievement grinds, especially since we're so close to 100,000 subscribers and roughly 70% of you aren't subscribed, so it would mean a lot. But enough of that, let's get to it. Welcome to the achievement grind. So this is going to be a slightly different video, as there isn't any plot to go through at all. So I'm going to go through these colossal achievements as best as I can for you lovely folks. Now, for those of you that don't know, Texas Chainsaw is an asymmetrical horror in which a team of victims take on the team of the family. The victims have to survive an escape and the family need to kill and defend the escapes. Simple as. However, what makes this quite good is that every single character plays differently. Take the family, for example. The five family members are Leatherface, of course, the cook, the hitchhiker, Johnny and Sissy. Each have different abilities, such as Cook's ability to listen out for his next meal, Sissy being able to poison objects and survivors, and Hitchhiker being able to set traps. Now it does go a bit further than that of course, but that is the basic gist. So for the 100% on this game, we're going to need to dabble with every character and every power. So the most important question I suppose is where to start, with the family or the victims? Now since I was a killer main on DBD, I knew that I needed to give family a go first, and our first ever game was with Cook. Now we did have a general understanding on how to play, however in practice that is a lot different, and as you'd expect, we didn't do too well. We got used to the movement, the stamina and the signs of survivor movement, but without a sense of the map we couldn't really do much, and the game didn't last too long. Now we got a couple of licks in, however no kills, but when the game ends we do get our first achievement for levelling up and unlocking something new, gaining behind the curtain. And the next achievement came soon after, as when we then put a couple of points into Bubba's skill tree we unlocked running, jumping, climbing trees. However, without a kill, we then went for another killer game, and this time we chose Sissy. Again, it was a new map, so I didn't really know my way around well, however, we spot the pesky victims trying to be sneaky, <laughs> big mistake. We chased the Connie for a little while, however, the kill went to Johnny. Time to try again. Oh, there you are. Let's go! Ooh! I'll do it. Oh, one hit is all it took. Just how we like it. However, after this brutal death, we unlock two more achievements. For executing our first victim and the first victim in the match, we unlock both first blood and welcome to the family. And honestly, I cannot hear that sentence without hearing Jack. Welcome to the family, son. <laughs> However, with our first quest for blood satisfied, the game ended and we moved on down the achievement list. Now, let me introduce you to Grandpa. Grandpa is an NPC member of the family. Now, throughout the game, you can collect blood by either finding these hanging buckets or a much faster, fresher source. But with this blood, you can then feed it to Grandpa. When he wakes up, he will start screaming throughout the match. If a survivor moves whilst he's screaming, we can then see their aura. The more you feed him, the stronger he gets, so it's always in the best interest of the family to get Grandpa fed. And the only thing better to drink and blood is the various delicious flavours of gamersups like titty milk and brand risk that you can enjoy with 10% off with code jazzy. But here lies our next achievement, as when we loaded up another sissy game we fed him 10 times and unlocked he was the greatest ever, before carrying on as normal. The game ended the same as before with us winning even though I didn't really contribute much to the team, but with a couple of levels under our belt we finally had enough skill points to level up sissy and get her to level 5. When we did we also unlocked Lone Star. Now honestly, I was still feeling the family, specifically Sissy. Her ability to poison things and move around the map much easier was really helping me come to terms with the environment. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> However, this game, and for the first time, we managed to fully feed Grandpa and get him to level 5. Now, level 5 is incredibly powerful. He more or less screams all the time, and at level 5, it just completely reveals them. With this power, we were able to finish the fight much quicker, and even though a couple of survivors did get out, Grandpa stayed at level 5. So, when the game ended, we unlocked the next achievement for getting him to level 5 and keeping him there, unlocking us, the Soy's family. Now, by this time, I was getting a little familiar with how the family was meant to be played, and kills 
were getting more frequent, for now anyway. And this was quite evident as we then got a perfect 4 kills on the Slaughterhouse map and then unlocked our next achievement, making Grandpa proud, for killing all 4 survivors on every map in the game. By now, I was also playing a lot of Sissy, and even though I was horrendously enjoying myself, I knew that I had to move away from that family member as there are achievements to get with the rest. And the next achievement I went for was a surprisingly easy one. As the Hitchhiker, you have the ability to take similar paths that the victims can. You can go through cracks in the walls, these little hidey holes that are scattered throughout the map, and this achievement simply has us use a single wall crack, shimmy hole, and ladder in a single game. So when we loaded up into the slaughterhouse again, we ignored the actual work and started to find these points. It only honestly took a minute or two, and when we climbed the top of the ladder, we unlocked I'm Coming For You. By this time, we had also reached level 10, so we were one fifth down to grinding to level 50 for another achievement, but little did I know that you only need 17,000 XP for level 10. However, level 50 is closer to 600,000 XP, so we have a lot more grinding to do. So, let's continue. Still on the family path, I then did a couple of rounds as Bubba, and I wanted to try to go for the kill in 30 seconds achievement, as well as the much easier task of just breaking 10 obstacles with our chainsaw. Now, the kill in 30 seconds achievement did indeed make me nervous, as since I didn't know the basement pathing that well, finding a survivor fast enough to kill them without them getting away was a pain. However, the breaking 10 obstacles came in our second game. We started to cut this rather ugly table thing in half, and we unlocked Dog Will Hunt. Now, there is another family related achievement that I wanted to grind as well, and it has us play as every member of the family, as we need every single person's execution animation. Now, we had got a kill and an execution with every single single family member except Johnny. He was the last person that we needed to do it with, so we chose him and loaded on in. The game itself was fairly decent, as this also gave me the opportunity to get Johnny's power-related achievement as well, for spotting five footprints of survivors. However, on the way to do so, we then saw an Anna that wanted to let us know that she had in fact beaten us, as there are some pretty easy and free escapes on the gas station map, but this happened instead. Uh oh. The, the front one. <laughs> Is it like the one with the generator? Yeah, okay. Yeah, just fucking chase them out. I feel like I just heard someone. Are they the other one? No fucking way. I cannot stress to you how amazing that felt. And we unlocked some achievements, of course. The first was for killing a victim extremely close to an exit, unlocking so close. And with that execution, we also did one with every single family member and also unlocked Executioner. My last task for this match was then the footprints. And when we went back to feather terrorize the stupid pesky survivors, we found a lovely fresh collection of boot prints. We analyzed them by apparently eating them and doing that five times unlocked us also, can't hide from me. And honestly, that was a fantastic game and getting those unlocked felt amazing, so I wanted to kind of keep this momentum going by getting more family power related achievements. So back to Cook. Now earlier I mentioned the Cook's ability to listen to survivors, but he also has a passive of being able to add three more locks to doors around the map. And honestly, the locks can become incredibly crucial to the family's success on certain maps and against certain players. <coughs> Connie. However, the next achievement saw us just simply add locks to 10 doors. This is rather easily got as you can just take the locks off once secured and then go and put them on another door. So when we hit our 10th, we unlocked safe and secure. But we're not done with the cook either as we then have the listening achievement left as well. And we got it in the next game. Whilst chasing survivors in the basement, we listened to them very, very intensely. And on the 10th spotted survivor, we unlocked I Hear You. Now, I had easily spent a good 10 or 15 hours as family already and hadn't even really dabbled with much victim yet. Don't get me wrong, we had a couple of games and I even escaped some, but I was still very heavily focused on the family side. So now I knew it was time for some serious playing as victim. As I always say with these kind of games that you need to play both roles to really understand the mindset of the other side. It really helps you get better at predicting movement and plans, so we loaded into victim. Now as victim there are several items and tools that you can pick up to either get further throughout the map like unlock tools and escape parts, you can also of course get your health, but another pickup is bone shards and these shards allow you to be able to defend yourself against the family a little bit. Having a confrontation with them where both sides mash a button to win and you can even stab grandpa 
that and cause him to lose levels of his power as well. So after a couple of games, I once again was getting fairly okay, knowing pathing and what escapes were really available on each map, even if I didn't really know how to open them up yet. But I started to get comfortable stabbing family. So when we got into our fourth confrontation with a family member and won it by punching him straight in the plums, we unlocked our first victim achievement, bring it on. However, after a couple more games of victim, I was already getting the bubba rich and realized that the next achievement I should really focus on is the one for getting a kill in 30 seconds of the game starting. As we get paired with higher ranking survivors, the chances of this are going to go down drastically. So I loaded up a bubba game and got to work. The first game we had after returning to bubba, we charged our chainsaw, ran around the corner and like an absolute miracle, a victim was just there waiting for me. We spent a couple of seconds chasing her, but we mulched her insides within that 30 second mark somehow and unlocked the first tricky achievement in the game, you spelt champion wrong. Now getting this somewhat difficult achievement out of the way with gave me a burst of pride and energy so we kept that momentum going moving forward and kill after kill we started to absolutely clean the lobby of victim scum. One kill after another we were just taking down the entire lobby and with a final chest mulching session that Julie just couldn't miss we killed all four victims in the same game and unlocked another achievement for doing so, mine all mine. However with a lot of the family related achievements at least dinted it was time to head back to victim to learn more. The next game I decided that Sonny was the best bet as his power related achievement is extremely easy. He has kind of the same power as the cook as he can detect movement and shows you if anybody is close. All we need to do is to track every single member of the family in a single game. It is so easy that when we escaped our restraints and survived for a single minute we popped our power and since every member of the family was running around us we very swiftly unlocked all knowing. We continued powering through with victim and at first it was extremely tough. We had a couple of lucky games every now and again but being solo and still learning the game it was very difficult to make it further than just escaping the basement sometimes. So definitely was thinking that family might have the edge. But even with that I was still having a lot of fun and carried on all the same. A little bit later whilst grinding unlocking points with Connie's power we also got our next achievement simply for healing teammates four times. Once you're aware of this achievement and you go out of your way for it it's again quite easy. And soon we unlocked team player because of course yes yes I am. Now the main achievement I was going for here whilst trying to grind others was to escape a match without being shown by grandpa's scream and to escape without making any noise from collecting items or running. Tough but once out of the way we would be able to play victim a lot better as we don't have to be so conscious on keeping quiet. Now we weren't getting too lucky as we were getting killed a lot during our matches but we were still gaining XP and unlocks. So when we then got sissy to level 10 the max level for individual characters in the game we respect all of our points and by doing so unlocked respect. Another easy one once you've got the levels that is. But after it was straight back to victim and getting these sound related escapes. We had maybe 10 to 15 games that evening and just no luck unfortunately so I decided to call it a night. However the next morning we booted up the game with good intentions and extreme determination and somehow it worked. We booted up a game as Leyland in the slaughterhouse and whilst the family were distracted with the other victims and feeding grandpa we slowly made our way to one of the exits and eventually there was only one door between us. However unfortunately even though we hadn't been spotted by grandpa yet there was a chicken. A chicken that unfortunately decided that now was the perfect time to scream the song of its people. So with one achievement rumbled we just picked the lock and just in the nick of time we escaped as we were starting to get slashed by the hitchhiker. However we opened the door and escaped without grandpa spotting us once unlocking tread softly. One down another one to go. We continued to grind for the rest of the day however unfortunately there wasn't a single achievement to unlock until our next stream. By now I was getting much more familiar with both sides. I knew the best escapes on each map and was starting to understand the best way to open them and we were also unlocking quite a couple of perks that made each match a little more forgiving on both sides and just generally started to understand the map layouts more which were easily the hardest part to overcome about the game. Now a method of escape you can use as a victim if you don't have many options left is to throw yourself down a well above ground. Doing so will drop you back into the basement again and take away some of your health. The next achievement only had us do this 10 times so on the 10th we took a tumble and unlocked doing well. Now speaking of unlocking we also carried on jimmying doors open as Connie and when we used our power to more or less instantly unlock our 10th door altogether the next achievement fully focused unlocked and with that we are now making some seriously nice progress. However the pain of the grind hasn't even begun yet trust me on that. 
but more on that later. Now, earlier I mentioned that you can grab bone shards to stab family members in the back, stunning them, and that's where our next achievement would lie for a little while. As when we spy a sissy stabbing our dear friend, we give her a taste of her own medicine and give her a little stab of our own. Since it was the third time we've done this, we also unlocked fighting back. Since we were making some decent progress, I then decided to go back to the family and pick up some more of their related achievements as well. And thankfully, they all fell together rather nicely and more importantly, quickly. The first we got was for poisoning 15 items as sissy. Easy to do in premise, but with only a certain amount of poisons and items in the game, it's one that will slowly build up over time. So we kept playing with sissy to eventually unlock this. However, in doing so, we also got a surprise achievement that I was not expecting. As when we drop a poison cloud whilst chasing a couple of survivors, it turns out that both of them actually pushed their way through the cloud, and doing this unlocks our next achievement, Powder Burns. Accidentally getting this out of the way also felt great, as knowing my luck if I purposefully went for this, it just wouldn't have happened, so Grandpa blessed us there. And continuing the trend, we then soon reached our 15th poisoned item. As I said, it would only take a couple of games to grind, and once done, we unlocked Don't Touch. With that, Sissy is more or less completed, so it's time to move on to the other family members again. The next that we needed was with the Hitchhiker. Now, Hitchhiker can place bone traps that capture survivors and damage them a bit. And to be honest, they are quite weak, and it takes nothing for survivors to counter them. However, we don't care, as by just catching five survivors in traps total, we unlocked I Got One. This is also easiest by placing traps at escape points like the generator or the car battery, or at the top of ladders outside of the basement. For the next little while though, we went back to Sissy just to grind some kills for another achievement. However, here, I discovered something hilarious. Now, one of the achievements is for barging open 10 locked doors, but it turns out that we can close and lock the doors ourselves, and have that count when we break them open. Seems a little bit weird, but it works, so we simply locked doors, wormed our way around to the front, and smacked them open. On our 10th, we unlocked Can't Keep Me Out. Now, by this time, I really started to feel like I was getting used to the game, and the way that it was meant to be played, especially since that survivors were getting better too, which made the games much more engaging. I was honestly loving it so far, but after a touch more family, it was time to get back to victim, as there is no point putting off the inevitable. Now, on the map, the family house, there is a specific achievement for escaping through the road exit after jumping out the front window, as a lovely little reference to Sally in the first film. Now, this seemed quite intimidating to me, as if you jump out of the window, the family would more or less be on your ass faster than Bubba can stall his chainsaw. So I decided to embrace this head on with Leland just to try. We threw ourselves out of the window and quickly washed our cuts closed, and then we just hid for a little while. After a couple of seconds, the family had to go back to the victims on the top floor, and that gave us the perfect amount of time to kick the generator and to start sprinting to the road. Now, I was a little worried that the time between jumping through the window and escaping was a touch too long. However, we still sprinted as fast as we could until we got past the electricity grid. Now, funnily enough, when we were past it, the cook turned it back on, which meant that I wasn't reachable until the family members turned it back off. So here I thought about going for another slightly tricky achievement, to be the last survivor left, to wait three minutes, and then escape. I thought, why not, since they cannot get to me, just need the last survivor to die or escape, and then we should be home free. There was a problem though, they turned it back off. <gasps> But even though we were chased off, we unlocked Be Like Sally, which was again, another nice one to tick off. Now, being so close to the three minute escape achievement, I decided to try and tackle that next and give myself the best chance to do so. Now, a couple of games after that, the entire team of victims that I was playing with besides me were wiped out instantly. The family absolutely destroyed them. So we became the most stealthy Leland that you could possibly imagine and extremely slowly and carefully started to push our way through to one of the exits. There were some incredibly close calls where in which I don't actually know how the family didn't spot me, but they didn't, so we carried on. We made it to the last door before freedom and popped it open, once again sprinting to the side of the road as soon as we could, and when we escaped, we very thankfully unlocked last victim standing. In the very next game, we also unlocked our next, as Leland's power allows him to shoulder barge the family, knocking them over and stunning them for a couple of seconds, allowing you to run away. The next achievement has us do it 10 times, so since we were playing Leland anyway, we soon unlocked our hero, and yeah, we did unlock this as we were sort of bullying a hitchhiker, but you didn't see that, ignore it, I'm a nice man, trust me, I promise. Anyway, from starting this game to now, we had easily already played this game for maybe 30 or 40 hours, and in such, we had some decent levels and a lot of skill points to spend. The next achievement has us simply get every character to level 5, but weirdly enough, just on the one side. So when we got every family member specifically to level 5, we unlocked the next achievement as well, Texas through and through. Now it's time for another achievement that I specifically 
quickly chose to go for and battle through. Now, as I've said, you can backstab family members. However, the next achievement is for specifically stabbing each family member in a single game. Now, back at this time, this was a fairly daunting task and something that would be much more apparently easier on later in the game. However, for now, I picked Leyland and hopped into this wanting this achievement and this achievement alone. And this is how it went. Whoa, 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 whoa! What? Oh, he one-shotted me. Yep, that was my first introduction to a Leatherface one-shot potential. Anyway, let's try that again. It was tough and there was some extremely close calls when I was only one family member remaining. And this is how it ended. <laughs> Sissy, now it's my turn. Take that, you cow. Yes! <laughs> Thankfully, we caught that last stab just in time and unlocked, now it's my turn. After that, it was time for another easy achievement that I'm surprised took so long. All we have to do for this one is hide in a freezer, a locker, a wardrobe, a trunk, and a car boot. Wardrobe was the only one we had left, as I thought I'd already done it. And as you'll come to know, nobody hides in this game. But we jumped into the wardrobe and unlocked the next achievement, Nowhere Left to Hide. Now, remember earlier I said about an achievement for escaping without making a lot of noise? Well, finally, and after many, many more hours of games for it, we got lucky. We still did our bit, don't get me wrong, but we took it extremely slowly and steadily, letting our teammates take the most of the pressure once out of the basement. And also, one of my teammates was the incredibly lovely and talented Yoma. Go follow him. He also does achievement hunting content as well, and he is just lovely. <laughs> All right, Fuck the balls. You, Twist his dick. <laughs> Did you see Johnny? <laughs> But we helped the main game as much as we could while staying as quiet as possible. Yoma, being the champ that he was, had managed to open up a direct path to one of the exits. So when it was safe to do so, we sprinted there, avoiding all of the chickens we could. And once we tasted that sweet, sweet freedom, we unlocked Shush. Or Shh, I don't know. After that, we grinded levels, kills, and escapes for a couple more days, getting even more understanding of both roles and the best strategies for winning them. And it wasn't until two days later that we unlocked our next. The achievement that came after Shush was for simply escaping using every exit on the slaughterhouse. Once again, this one was sort of an accident, as I didn't remember for the life of me which escapes I'd already got. However, we managed to sneak out of the car battery exit, and in doing so, we also unlocked off to market. The next also came rather soon afterwards. Now, Anna's power is the ability to tank a hit and become immune to certain effects and powers. Now, one of the effects we can become immune to is poison, which is where our next achievement lies. As when we become poisoned, we just pop our power and it'll lose all of its effect. We just need to do this four times. So once we found Sissy for the fourth time, we took a nice deep breath of some stagnant gas and cured ourselves. Doing so, unlocking Purge. Now, folks, it is time to unfortunately have a serious talk. There are a couple of achievements in this game that are absolutely brutal to do. Namely, get out of there, hung up on you and fixer being the main three these achievements are of course possible however the chances of them happening are so so beyond slim that they might as well be impossible hung up on you for example for this you have to execute 10 victims on the gallows as leatherface which is an extremely rare death animation even though it plays at the start of every game which just kind of spoils the fun of getting it but to get the gallows kills you have to find a survivor bleeding out pick them up and then carry them to a special part of the map to kill them sounds easy in premise right well well, wrong. I have played this game as of writing this script into the hundreds of hours, and I have only seen this naturally once. It's too almost RNG dependent. You have to hope a survivor is injured enough to go down without killing them. You have to hope that they don't recover in time, which really doesn't take long at all. You have to hope other family members aren't chasing them, as then you have to fight over the body. And you have to hope that the gallows is close enough so that they don't die in your arms. Honestly, it does sound easy on paper, but trust me, this achievement would take, I reckon, around 300 hours hours to complete naturally. The requirements are really impossibly rare, and that's just an example of one of them. So I'm not gonna lie, I boosted them in a private match, which can still pop up a lot of the achievements. And we did this with the three that I knew would break the run if I didn't boost them. And since they are technically possible and I didn't do anything wrong to unlock them, I also really don't feel bad for doing it like this. If I didn't do it, this video wouldn't be possible, so make of it what you will. The three achievements we boosted here were for pulling survivors out of hiding places 20 times, something that just 
just never happened as survivors never hide in them to begin with. I think I've done it around twice naturally through about 100 hours, so we completed them and look and get out of there. The next was of course for the Leatherface Gallows kills, which didn't take too long, and on our 10th kill we unlocked Hung Up On You. And finally we boosted Fixer, which makes you stop the generator, fix the fuse box, and open the pressure valve in a single game. This one is just purely asking for too much, and you would be killed long before you could get even the second one done, let alone all three. So we boosted this quickly too, unlocking Fixer. Now I do know that some of you may frown on the fact that I boosted them, but hey, I didn't break any rules or do anything that you folks couldn't do yourselves, and it was pretty much my only option for the 100% on this game. So make of it what you will, I just wanted to of course be transparent with this. Anyway, with that out of the way, we headed back into the public lobbies and over the next couple of hours started to unlock more achievements. The next one was for escaping with every exit on the family house. I'd say the car battery was the hardest and the last for us to run through, so when we did, we unlocked leaving home. After that, we escaped again. Now, this escape meant that we had finally got a perfect four-man escape on every map, so with that, we also unlocked escape artists. And finally, for this bit, we also managed to escape on every exit of the gas station, unlocking out of gas. So, it was back to the grind, and there were now only two family-related achievements that we needed, so we decided to go for those next. Now, earlier, I mentioned that victims can enter an encounter with you where you both mash a button trying to win. We have already unlocked the achievement for the victim side of this endeavour, however, an hour or two later, we managed to get the fourth encounter win as a family and unlocked Get Back Here. So, the last step as killer was to reach 100 executions. This one was gonna take one of the longest, as it is definitely one of the grindier family side achievements. However, we were very comfortable with Leatherface at this point, so we just battled through getting execution after execution. Sometimes my luck would be rubbish, and survivors at this point were really learning how to escape the maps, with some games taking as little as two minutes to complete. However, we just kept at it in the name of achievements, and by doing so, also unlocked a different one. As when we finished our 74th public game with a delicious victory, we got the achievement What Will Be Left Of You. And we are almost there, folks. However, the next couple of achievements are what really made this game a bastard to complete, as by now, I think we'd roughly hit the 50 hour mark on playtime. But knowing my path and getting better with every game, we just kept throwing ourselves into family and getting as many kills as we could. And slowly but surely, the number was rising. And then finally, and thankfully, we killed a Connie right at the start of the game and unlocked Serial Killer, which was honestly an achievement I wasn't expecting to take as long as it did. But with that through, we more or less have no reason to play family now until the last achievement. So it's time to get back to grinding victim. As for one of the next achievements, we need 100 escapes, and this was going to take some time and patience. But we also did need to grind other things whilst we do that one as well. So this achievement wasn't at the front of my memory. The next task was to grind Julie's ability to level 3. I have no idea why her specific achievement is the only one bound to being a level 3 perk, but we need to do it so we began the long grind of getting that up. I then spent the next couple of days just grinding levels as Julie, and eventually after maybe 10 more hours, we had her perks and her ability to level 3, which was perfect for another achievement as well. As when we started up the next game with a level 3 ability and 3 level 3 perks alongside it, we unlocked perking up as well. But now in the game, all we have to do is activate our power 5 times. Easily done. We just waited for the bar to refill, once it did we burnt it, and on the 5th time we unlocked undetectable. And folks, we're almost there, just 2 more achievements to go. But these 2 were painful. 100 escapes and reaching level 50. Both a considerable grind. But I'm not scared of a bit of work, so we got to it, and I spent the next 4 days more or less exclusively just learning more victim, and making every escape count. It was getting easier, and by this time it was kind of understood that if the family were on comms, it was going to be a pretty easy win, as the strategies to escape in under 2 minutes, family members didn't even have time to prep before we escaped sometimes. So after 4 days and escape after escape, we were only 1 off our goal, so I threw myself into the next match eager for that win. And when we joined the lobby for it, this is what happened. Front angle front. Yo, son of Jazzy, I'm gonna make sure I kill you first. I'm letting you know that now. You're at level 10, Leland, and you're level 34. You need to get off the fucking game. Nah, 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 nah. I want you to use Leland. I want you to try to smack me and do all that other shit because I'm gonna kill you. Don't go for the don't go for the valve. Don't go for nothing. I'm on your ass. You understand me? I'm the craziest leatherface you ever met because I'm leatherface IRL. You understand me? Oh, you streamed five hours ago? Yeah, I'm on your ass, boy. When I have leatherface, I got the mask on right now as we speak, nigga. With a chainsaw on my lap. Let's get this shit cracking on the dead homies. Yeah, he was trying far too hard, but my god, I was howling at this. Let's just see how the game went, yeah? Are you out? 
Weirdly enough, he didn't really say anything in the end game chat though. How odd. Wonder what happened to his confidence. Anyway, with that, we are now on the final achievement. Throughout everything we have done so far, we had managed to make it to level 34, but now we needed to get to 50, and I knew this was going to take many, many more hours of grinding and pain. But sod it, we can't give up on the final achievement now, can we? So let's get to work. Now for this, I was a little cheesy. Well, maybe not cheesy, but we would used the best XP farming strat in the game. Now, roughly for a good game when you win well, you can expect maybe one to maybe two and a half thousand XP. However, Cook's listening ability is phenomenal for farming, as every time you spot a survivor, it gives you 50 XP. So I just played exclusively Cook and tried to listen to the survivors as much as possible. And honestly, this was working so, so well, and it would only roughly take five decent games for a level. So I knew that this was the way to go, with some games getting us close to even 9,000 XP, which is mental. However, However, with only half of the XP that we needed, we had a lot to do, so I spent five more days just repeating this method. It was at this point as well that victims really knew what they were doing, and I sometimes had 10 games back to back where it took only minutes to escape, so that was also a factor into it. And soon we were level 49 with only one good game's worth of XP left before level 50 and the final achievement. The game went incredibly well XP wise, and soon we knew we had done it. It's just let's. Let's just get some more. Let's go. Texas Chainsaw is done, folks. Show it. Escape. Reach level 50. We've done it. <laughs> Yay. With that, level 50 is ours, and so is the final achievement, Totally Texas. Now, honestly, Texas Chainsaw was a gauntlet that I was not ready to face. I knew it might have been a decent grind, but as you're about to see, this game broke records for the achievement grind. So with that, Texas Chainsaw is done, and the grind is over. Now, Texas Chainsaw is a first for the channel in the fact that every achievement is online and there was no story to talk about. So firstly, I hope you enjoyed the video and it's no doubt differing format from the rest. But playing an online game like this from day one was honestly fantastic. It was amazing to see everybody as a community learning the game and figuring out everything throughout our time on it. Both sides were also really fun to play. Don't get me wrong, there were some balancing issues and general quality of life changes that really need to happen for the long run, but even if I don't play this game again, I really, really enjoyed my time with it. So honestly, amazing job to all of the devs and the people involved in this. It was a treat. However, it was also a nightmare for the achievements, and I'm not even talking about the ones that are boosted. As I've already said, they make the game almost impossible to finish. But enough teasing, let's get on to the stats, folks. For Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it took us over 103 hours to grind all 51 achievements, which makes this the first game ever on the channel to take us into the three digits of grinding. For my rating of the game, I'm going to be giving it a solid 7 out of 10. As I said, it was a great fun for the most part, but since I'm high level now, the flaws and the issues really did come apparent, and I will be waiting for more fixes before I return. If they continue to balance the game, it could easily go to an 8 or honestly even a 9, but in its current state, it gets a comfortable 7. Also, I really need them to add an execution for Grandpa. I don't know why they wasted the Gallows animation at the start of every match. My personal thinking is that once you've picked the survivor up, you should be able to take them to Grandpa and do a really cool, awesome, rare animation. I'm quite surprised that that isn't in the game, but there's my idea anyway. For difficulty of the achievements, I'm going to be giving this game an insane 9. 9 out of 10. The game's achievements are truly a huge feat. You are going to have to get extremely intimate with the strats and the mechanics of pretty much every character and aspect of the game. You are also going to sink easily a minimum of 100 hours into this behemoth of a task, and even if you do boost some of them, you're going to be spending a lot of time in Texas. If they ever remove the ability to boost achievements in private matches, <laughs> it, it, it's over. It's done. But I tell you what, the pride for getting this 100% was something that I haven't felt since Mirror's Edge. So if you are wanting a challenge and another really tricky 100% for yourself, you are going to have to shed a lot of blood, sweat and tears and time into this one, but I would recommend it. For the hardest achievement, there are a couple to choose from. However, for me, easily the hardest is hung up on you. The chances of getting this naturally are so, so slim that it really can't be any other achievement. And honestly, I would horrendously advise you to boost this one. But that's just me. If you do want to go for this naturally, all the credit to you. And honestly, you will have the highest level of respect from me. 
You'll find out. But with that, folks, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is complete. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, leave down in the comment below who your favorite character to play is and why. Also, need to give a massive thanks to all of my incredible supporters on Patreon again. I really do appreciate it as you all help me so much in making sure that I can keep doing these videos as long as possible. So, thank you, truly. But that's me, folks. Don't forget to swing by my Twitch where we also go for the Achievement Grinds Live. It would be lovely to have you. But with that, thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye for now.